Hi everyone, Nubkex here, and in today's video, I want to show you a team, an all epic team without using Inquisitor Shemail. I, th I think everyone's probably seen videos and knows about Inquisitor Shemail and how busted he is right now for Hydra because of how he completely counters that fear head. Uh, but this team, as you can see from the damage on the right hand side, this all epic team is capable of one keying the Hydra boss. In fact, easily so, easily so. We're going strong here against this Hydra boss. 57 turns in, 8 minutes into the fight, and we're not really in any danger uh, of, of the run wiping. I think I did cancel out of it just to, you know, to, to show you this video and show you how it works. Uh, but yeah, let me dive in. Let me show you the team, explain how it works, um, and um, yeah, here it is. And I'll show you some uh, how all of the champions are built, what they do, and uh, some alternatives, right? Some alternatives as well. So this is the team. Uh, we've got... Uh, Deacon, Armstrong, Seeker, Royal Guard, Godseeker, Aniri, Rian the Conjurer, and Rector Drath. Uh, let me show you how they're built. I'll ex then, well, at the end, I'll explain how the team comes together, what they all bring, um, and alternatives as well. So let's dive in. Uh, first up, we have... Uh, where is he? Here he is, Deacon Armstrong. So Deacon Armstrong... Uh, he's basically a speed booster, so he's... <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I switched his chest and I forgot to roll it up. Um, so that would have helped, probably. Um, but he has 100% crit rate. I have him going very fast. He's got way more accuracy than he needs, and he's just overall generally well-built, I would say. Uh, and his masteries, I have him in fairly standard uh, War Master Tree and Support Mastery, so nothing too special there. Uh, he comes in, he gives us a speed aura. And he also gives us turn meter fill, AOE decrease defense on a very short cooldown, very reliable, and also leech, single target leech on his A1. This is this is a big part of my strategy here, which is that the Hydra is very quick, uh, especially the head of mischief, which steals turn meter when it attacks you. It's the fastest head. Um, that's pretty bad. And you would like to use increased speed to help match the Hydra speed and, and play around it more. But that's just too dangerous, right? If you put increased speed on your team, then it gets stolen by that head of mischief and it spreads increased speed around all the Hydra heads. You are going to die so fast, it's not even funny. So fast, it's not even funny. Um, so instead, we're going to be looking at some champions that are going to be boosting our turn meter without putting increased speed because there's no way for the Hydras to take advantage of that. So that's Deacon Armstrong. Uh, second up, I have Seeker. So Seeker comes in. Uh, I thought this would be useful. I don't think it ever procced, actually. But whenever Seeker gets crit, uh, it heals him by 20%, and it puts increased defense on all of your team uh, for two turns. So I thought that'd be a nice thing to help keep us alive if we were crit. I don't think it ever procced, though. Uh, again, he does the turn meter thing. So three turn cooldown, 30% turn meter fill, 50% increased attack buff on all allies, and it gives an extra turn. And then his A1 does damage. I have him built for Bad Eater, so he's got... Pretty good gear overall, I would say, roughly good gear. So high crit rate, uh, very, very fast, um, and then just solid overall stats as well. Uh, and then for his mastery, he's in Bat Eater Masteries uh, right now. So he does have War Master in the corner. You can't see it, but it's there. War Master is there. Um, one thing that's a little bit clunky here is that Deterrence counterattacks, has a chance to counterattack when you get, well, relevant for the Hydra when you're feared or true feared. This can be bad because he can counterattack when he doesn't have perfect veil, and then he also gets true feared, which isn't ideal. Uh, but hey, this is just how I have him built for Bad Eater. I'm not going to change him because I, my Bad Eater needs to work. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I'm running with him. Uh, next up, we have maybe a bit of a surprise. Uh, for damage, we have Royal Guard. So Royal Guard comes in. Uh, Royal Guard has a four hitter on a four turn cooldown that has a chance to place decreased speed. So this is actually really useful. You can decrease speed on the Hydra, and it's actually kind of difficult to find champs that do reliably apply decreased speed. This is not reliable by any means, and it's a long cooldown, but it's just a little bit of extra extra benefit to bring to your team. If you get that decreased speed at a good time on the Hydra heads, it can really save you a lot of hassle. His A2 is the big move, four turn cooldown takedown, AoE, damage based off of enemy max HP. So this does a big chunk of AOE damage, and then his A1 can also place decreased defense. So a bit of backup decreased defense. So he's bringing a couple of nice debuffs. He's bringing like decent overall damage, and then he has a big AOE nuke that actually works pretty well against Hydra. It's capped against Hydra, but it's still good. Um, and he brings that on a four turn cooldown for his masteries. Again, these are probably not optimized. Um, 
probably he'd be better for Hydra with Warmaster. I have him with Flawless Execution because I used to use him for dungeon runs and stuff like that. Um, so I could probably redo these masteries. I wouldn't actually follow those, to be honest. And then his ring's not rolled up, actually, his ring. Um, oh, it's not glyphed either. Nice defensive ring. Uh, but yeah, as you can see with Royal Guard, we're not worried really about his attack. Gave him a bit of attack, but just upping his health, his defense a bit, boost those defensive stats. He's decently fast, 100% crit rate, acceptable accuracy, and he's got lots and lots of crit damage. Um, so obviously this build is going to be pretty hard for newer players to hit, no question about it. For example, he's got like a HP% percent chest. But um, if you can, he can potentially do lots of damage. I'll show you some alternatives like HP burn, which are probably better. I just don't have any epic AOE H burners left. Um, who's up next? Okay, then we have a bunch of revivers, right? Let me just double check. <laughs> yeah, we've got like three revivers actually, funny enough, that we don't, uh, we don't necessarily need to use all of those revives. So uh, reviver number one, who's the revive we actually do use is, is Rector Draft. So she's very good. And again, I've got her built very well. Uh, but her A3 is a revive, 60% HP in turn meter and perfect veil for three turns. Very nice. Very good single target revive. Her A2 is the big reason to bring her, or one of the big reasons to bring her. AoE heal for everyone. Nice. And then it also puts perfect veil for two turns and everyone at full HP. Otherwise, a continuous heal if they're lower on. So this is much worse. It's much better when they're high on health, which is doable with this team comp for Hydra. Um, but yeah, perfect veil lets you attack the head that puts fears on without getting fears, without getting those true fears, which is huge. Uh, it's really, really huge. Downside is it's a two turn buff with a four turn cooldown. So you're not gonna have it up 100%. Uh, so she won't 100% protect you at all, but she combos very well with the next champion I'm gonna show you, Godseeker and Eerie, to make this more reliable. Her A1 is a very unre unreliable decreased attack, but it's something. And then her passive is great. Whenever someone under Veil or Perfect Veil gets a turn, she heals them by 10% max HP and gives them 50 resistance too which helps you just resist all the debuffs, resist the buff steals, all of that. Um, her masteries, she's in, you know, War Master plus healing sort of stuff, you know, potential to increase the buff duration, which is great. More speed when people are dead so she can revive them, that sort of thing. Uh, and she's, again, built, I would say, very well. She's very fast, guys, very, very, very fast. Uh, she's got lots of resistance as well, tons of it. I think that's probably enough resistance, probably even for uh, Hydra Nightmare difficulty, so. Uh, then lots of HP, um, enough accuracy for now, and that's it. But yeah, she's super quick. So, you know, these are accessible, more accessible champions, obviously, than legendaries. But some of these builds are, you know, some of them are pretty good. Some of them aren't that good. Some of them are good, though. Uh, next up we have, uh, we'll come to Rian last. Uh, Godseeker and Eerie, she's very strong for this, guys. Very strong. Um, number one, quest for meaning. Uh, three turn cooldown. A, we attack. A, we heal for you. Decreases buffs on enemies by one turn. Fantastic to limit those buffs. Um, excuse me. Oh, Jesus. I almost sneezed, but I'm fine. I think I'm fine. Oh, it's still there. It's lingering. We're going to power through. I'll jump away if I'm going to sneeze. Um, but yeah, we don't have uh, we don't have reliable block, debu uh, block buffs debuff uh, in this team. So whenever the head of mischief steals stuff, he, he can steal stuff. And he can spread it to his team. And the other Hydra heads obviously can put buffs on themselves as well, like ally protect and reflect damage and that sort of thing. Um, she just reduces those buffs on the enemy, uh, which just limits what they're going to do. So it's fantastic. Also increases your own buffs. Uh, the big one here to increase is Perfect Veil from Rector Drath, which extends that bonus resistance. It gives another turn of extra Rector Drath healing, and it gives you again another turn of protection from fear. So the two combo very well. She also has a uh, single target revive, 50% health and turn meter, and resets cooldowns, excellent. Her A1 just does a bit of healing. Her passive increases everyone's healing received, and also puts uh, can basically prevent someone from dying once every four turns. So she's great, she does good damage too. So good damage, uh, and, and really helping with buff control. She's actually not fully mastered, and you could possibly redo her masteries as well if you wanted to. This is how I've got her done for now with War Master again. Um, yeah, I haven't really designed it for Hydra. That's just what she's running. And then finally, we have Rian the Conjurer uh, that you get from Doom Tower Normal. Uh, Madame Ceres, I think, would be better, but I don't have Madame, so I've got Rian. That's what we're using. Rian, actually, on her A1, has a decent chance of placing block buffs. So there's a nice source of block buffs, which otherwise this team doesn't have, which is good. Uh, her A2 
is when booked, 100% chance to remove all buffs from all enemies and put weaken, right? Put weaken. So again, this is really good to stop those Hydras spreading nasty buffs around. She just removes them, deals with them. Then she has a revive as well, which I don't think I ever used in my run. Um, I have her set actually to prioritize this over her revive. And I have Godseeker and, and her set to prioritize their revives. Reason being that this revive does res your champion with block debuffs and I don't want block debuffs to be stolen. So Rena's in there as like an emergency revive, but I don't want her to be the first person to revive because if block debuffs goes on those Hydra heads, I'm gonna have a very, very bad time. Uh, and Rian's build, um, accessories not rolled up. Um, I built her for PVP, to be honest. So she's very fast and tanky and has way too much accuracy. Like she's built for PVP. I have actually not respect her yet even into War Master, which she should be in. She should be in War Master. She's in bonus accuracy right now. So again, not even built for this, built for PVP, but obviously in, in good, most, a lot of six star gear and stuff like that, to be fair. Though accessories not rolled up, but yeah. Um, so if we take a look then, what is the, the concept of this team? Let me actually hit uh, start. Let's take a look at it in action so you can sort of see what's happening. But the idea with this team, to go through it one by one, right? So uh, Seeker is in there. Seeker is making everyone run faster and he's also providing increased attack to just get more damage out because we don't have a lot of big damage dealers on this team. Uh, so Seeker's doing that. Uh, Rian is in there for some block debuffs, uh, sorry, block buffs on the enemy. Mostly in there to remove buffs from the enemy, so we'll see if that ever works. And also our only source of AoE weaken, which again is going to up our damage. So we, uh, we're going to have decreased defense and weaken up most of the time. You can see, for example, Seeker, he takes extra turns, and so does uh, so does um, uh, Deacon. So they get they're going to get feared quite a bit. Um, also, backup revive. Uh, we have Deacon is again making us run faster with turn meter boosting. He's providing AoE decreased defense and leech. Uh, then we've got Rector is in for the perfect veil and healing and a revive. So mostly just perfect veil to help avoid the fears. Godseeker to extend our buffs and decrease enemy buffs. And then Royal Guards in there to do damage and a little bit of decreased speed and some backup buffs. But you can see that this is basically how it works. We have a lot of backup revives, so we're good on that. One thing that we do struggle with is we obviously don't have Hex. So actually attacking this head reliably is hard. We can, for example, now click the head and try to get him. Um, we've got lots of buff control with Rian and with Godseeker, so we're not too worried about the enemies getting buffed by Head of Mischief. Um, but yeah, that, that's sort of the idea of how it works. I'll show you some alternatives in a second. Um, but yeah, you can, you can see how the team is sort of working here. We have obviously difficulty hitting Head of Mischief. That could be bad. Uh, also, one thing this team does not have is any HP burn. So you're going to really struggle against the Poison Head if the Poison Head comes in. So I'd recommend you might need to rerun this team uh, a few times just to make sure that you don't run into that poison head. The poison head puts poison cloud on all the hydras, uh, which makes every hit against them a weak hit unless you have uh, HP burn on them. We don't have any burn. Uh, and burn is actually super good. Look at this. Here comes the, the, the AoE damage from, uh, from our boy. Not too bad. You can see we don't have any way to remove this reduced healing as well. So he will die. But we've got enough healers that it shouldn't really shouldn't really matter. Uh, but there you go. Gives you kind of an idea. Look, he goes down. This is where this is where Seeker counterattacks and fears himself, which is not good. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Two million damage already. A couple of minutes in. That's how it works. To give you some alternatives to this team. So alternatives to the team. Um, okay, alternatives. All other things you could put in. Um, I actually think that Gore Grab as an epic. We're gonna, just epics, by the way. Just epics. Gore Grab and Undead Hordes could be a great option. What does Gore Grab do? Gore Grab is kind of like a re replacement for Seeker. So he gives you turn meter fill, not as much as Seeker, and he gives you the increased attack. Now Gore Grab actually can also remove buffs on his A1. Not bad. And his A3 is an AoE revive and heal. So I actually think Gore Grab's great. He's also very tanky. He's kind of slow. Um, but yeah, I do have one built, uh, but I don't have him in the right gear. So uh, I have him leveled up and booked and stuff, but he doesn't have the right gear and he's no accuracy. So for me, he can't actually steal buffs, but he is a good option and could let you bring less revivers, right? He could take the place of Seeker, doesn't give you as much turn meter, but does bring revives and more buff control. Uh, another good option, actually, I think an undersung hero here could be Husk to replace, um, to do damage, right? Take your damage spot of Royal Guard. Uh, Husk, 
Actually, as an AoE, four turn cooldown as well. Damage equal uh, uh, proportional to enemy max HP. He could be a good option. Now, the downside is that two of the heads are spirit affinity, which is bad affinity for him, but he might be a decent option. I think your better options for doing damage are more probably AoE HP burn. So good options for that. AoE H I mean, Mordecai is the obvious one. I think Mordecai could be great here. Mordecai for damage. AoE HP burn on a four turn cooldown. Make sure to put it out after the, the left hand head, uh, the one that can cleanse his whole team. Let him cleanse his team, then burn all of them. And I think this is a place, it's not an attack. So this doesn't weak hit, I, I believe. This also gives you increased attack. So you could not need to worry about bringing increased attack on anyone else. Then he also fills your own turn meter, that's okay. And his attack does nothing, but he's a good burner. And he's, you know, he's fast, he's got good defense as well. Uh, another good burner I showed in one of my other videos is from Doom Tower um, Normal Rewards from Secret Rooms. Akoth, three turn cooldown for an AoE HP burn. 20% chance, but increased by 20% for each live enemy. There's always four. So this is always 100% HP burn on three turn cooldown. He's very good. He also gives your whole team a shield. And he does combo well with Rian the Conjurer as well. If he gets res by Rian, um, he automatically gives everyone a shield, which is pretty great. He also decreases crit rate, which is actually a nice debuff because uh, some of the Hydra is going to hit hard. He brings you a HP aura, which could be good if you don't have it. Um, other stuff we could run in here... Uh... I think Chancellor Yasmin could be good. She has a AoE buff removal on a four turn cooldown. And she also brings single target heal. And I think her A1 just, yeah, just does extra hits if they've no act act active buffs. And she brings you uh, ally speed in all battles. Yasmin is very good. Again, not the best affinity for this rotation, but she could be a great option. I don't have her built because I have Sithalia, who's like super Yasmin, basically. <laughs> um, but she's a decent option. Um, yeah, uh, in terms of replacing uh, Deacon, the decreased defense, I think Stagnite, very good. Decreased defense and, uh, and attack on a three turn cooldown. He also brings decreased speed on his A1, which is very nice. Uh, in Orcs, a good alternative would be Duck to bring you decreased defense, decreased attack. He also brings decreased accuracy in his A1, so he's great and he's very tanky too. So Duck could be a great option. Unfortunately, both for, for me, Stagnite and Duck are level 50, so I can't test them properly, unfortunately. Um, I think another one for damage that might actually work pretty pretty well could actually be two hack so two hack does an aoe decrease speed and he's void so you can get consistent decrease decrease speed on the hydra then he is like hard hitting single target a1 and a3 they do extra stuff with skills which is useless here unfortunately but i think that yeah aoe decrease speed is pretty good and single target damage and then he takes less damage while he's low on health so two hack could actually be a pretty good option for some damage uh Again, for buff control, Sandlash Survivor, she could come in. Uh, and it also gives you an increased defense aura. Um, so yeah, these are some ideas. But yeah, basically what you're looking to do, in summary, is the Hydra is a beast. The Hydra is a beast. What you're looking to do is, is to come in, sorry, come in, lots of speed boosting, decrease defense, weaken is optional, and lots of buff control and some revives as well. So, yeah, and then at least one damage champion. I'm actually, the weakness of this team perhaps is it's low on damage, but as you saw, we do just about enough. Kind of like Deacon, Seeker, and Godseeker doing some okay damage, and then uh, a Royal Guard doing the big hits that we just about squeezed through. So, there you go. Let me know if it was helpful. If you have a similar team that you've tried, um, let me know. Ob obviously, if you put Shamail in here, instead of like Royal Guard, it's going to fucking destroy everything. Um, it's going to be a much better team, but I'm presuming you don't have Shamail. Um, oh, alternate, let me just mention alternate revivers then as well. Alternates to the reviving. Um, I think, I don't have her, but probably the best option would be a Knight's Revenant. I actually think Senatia could be pretty good. Senatia uh, can equalize HP of allies, pretty nice, and heal people. Uh, she can do some heals on her a A1, and then she's an AoE attack with Warmaster. Could actually be pretty good, so she's an option. Uh, Doom Priest, I don't have, but Doom Priest would be probably better than Rector Drath. Basically, just healing people every turn and removing debuffs. So just constantly removing those fears every time she takes a turn. Make her run fast. She also brings increased attack if you need that. But mostly it's just about her passive. Make her fast and tanky. Uh, and she'll just keep cleansing people of their debuffs. I don't have Rector Draft. Thylesia could be a good option for damage here. Decreased defense AoE. Uh, debuffs. 
debuff spreads if they have hex and she hexes people if they're under decreased defense that could give you access to hex and epics which otherwise we lack so i'm supposed to be talking about revivers um <laughs> uh, i guess another one is, oh, she's also void is not there um is in banner lords void reviver ursula as a reviver uh, you're obviously a bit strapped for revivers and epics that are good um but yeah there you go thank you i will see you next time bye bye <laughs> i'm gonna end it because i just keep waffling okay we're going to go. Goodbye. Oh, like, comment, subscribe. Ah, new channel. Like, comment, subscribe. Please help. Please help. <laughs>